Many of you did not upgrade from Windows XP to Windows Vista, but are planning to upgrade to Windows 7. How dare you leave the Microsoft upgrade path? As a punishment, you can't upgrade directly from XP to 7. You have to do what's called a clean install, which means you're going to have to jump through some hoops to keep your old data and programs. Not to worry, we're going to show you a few ways to deal with the pain of installing Windows 7 on your XP machine, and afterward, Microsoft will forgive your trespasses. Maybe. Before you start, do these three things. First, run the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor. It will let you know if your computer can handle any version of Windows 7. Second, check the Windows 7 Compatibility Center. This is different than the Upgrade Advisor. It's going to tell you if you need to update your drivers or apps to make them work in 7. And third, make a copy of your hard drive, just in case things go horribly wrong. I recommend using Macrium Reflect. It's a free download available from download.com. Okay. Now you're ready to upgrade. Start by gathering all the installation files for all your applications. Windows 7 will put your data into a Windows.old file for you, but it's not going to reinstall your apps. Make sure you have all the CDs or if you downloaded programs, back up any install files you have on an external drive. Also, don't forget to gather all the license keys, either off the product boxes or from emails. You'll want them all handy in a place outside the computer you're upgrading. And the last thing, before we get to the actual Windows 7 disk, is to download and run the Windows Easy Transfer Wizard. This is going to allow you to back up all your files and settings to an external hard drive, a different one than the one you imaged earlier. Go to windows.microsoft.com and search for Windows Easy Transfer. Download the right version and install it. Launch the wizard and make sure your external drive is plugged in. You can send your data to a network location too, but in this example we're choosing an external drive. The program will check for what can be transferred, then give you an opportunity to password protect the data. Finally, choose your external drive and begin the backup. You shouldn't use your computer while this process is running. It'll take a while to move all your data over. Once it's done, you can set that drive aside. You're not going to need it until after Windows 7 completes updating. Finally, you're actually ready to insert the Windows 7 disk. When doing a clean install, it doesn't matter if you restart and boot off the disk or if you just run it from within Windows. It's going to give you a last chance to check compatibility, and if you're sure you don't need that, go ahead and click Install Now. It will ask you if you want to go online and get updates. I say yes. It could save you some time later. Then agree to the EULA. Choose Custom Install. With XP, if you choose Upgrade, the installation is going to fail. Next, pick the partition or drive you're installing Windows 7 on. Now, one listener actually wrote in and said he put Windows 7 on a separate partition from Windows XP, and he could still run his XP apps. No guaranteeing that'll work for you, though. A warning box will alert you that you're going to lose your old version of Windows, and your old files will be saved in C colon slash Windows dot old. Then Windows commences installing. Your computer will reboot a few times, and eventually the wizard will return, this time running in Windows 7. At this point, you'll be able to do things like set up a password, set security preferences, set the time and date, etc. Finally, look at that, you're running Windows 7. And you have device driver issues. Let's take care of that. Launch the device manager by pressing start and typing device manager in the search box. If you see those yellow exclamation points, those devices have driver issues. Now, the easiest way to fix them is to double-click the item, then click the Update Driver button, select Search Automatically for Updated Driver Software. If you're lucky, that'll fix your issues. If you're only human, though, you're still going to have a few devices with problems. Try looking at the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor again to see if the device and its new driver are listed. And if that doesn't work, check the manufacturer's website for that device. Once you get your devices running to your satisfaction, it's time to install your old programs. Gather your CDs and external drives or whatever you use to store the programs earlier and get to install it. For some programs, you might want to download the latest versions directly from the web. Finally, you can restore your data. It's all there in a folder called Windows.old where you can manually move everything back into the proper directories under Windows 7. We don't have to mess with that, though, because we did that easy transfer wizard earlier. So make sure your external drive is connected, then click Start, choose Computer, 
and under hard disk drives, choose the external drive where you stored your transfer data. Find the file you should have named Windows Easy Transfer Items from Old Computer. Double click that file. You can choose which accounts to move and the transfer wizard's going to figure out the rest for you. If it fails, your data is still in the Windows.old file. You're just going to have to move it by hand. And there you have it. You've upgraded slowly and slightly painfully from Windows XP to Windows 7. Now, if you want to save a lot of this hassle, you can get a program that will move all your data and your installed applications for you. It's called the PC Mover Windows 7 Upgrade Assistant. It's from Laplink, and it's going to cost you around 30 bucks. It will restore all your data and programs again without you needing to do any dragging and dropping or gathering of disks and license keys. Whichever way you decide to go, once you're done, do one last thing. Image your drive again with Macrium Reflect so you have a backup copy of your new Windows 7 machine. That's just good practice. And that's it. Hope this helps you make the jump. I'm Tom Merritt, CNET.com. <laughs>